So I guess a lot of you have been asking, what is the beef between me and Alpha Investments? Why am I making so many of videos? I've kind of explained it from the business perspective. Now there is, and that is the honest to God truth, that there is a business oriented goal in mind where his buy lists are very public and you know like for the last deal that i stole from him if you will he offered twenty five hundred dollars for my offer was four thousand if you included the two uh boxes that i allowed the seller the seller asked me hey well i would love to do draft i would love to do commander you know legends draft let me keep the collectors box, which was 420, 450 buy list, something over $400 buy list on Dave and Adams. And I would love to keep the uh, booster box as well. So that was over $500 in a buy list. Yeah, my offer was closer to 4,000. Rudy Chan's offer for that same collection was 2,500, which you can see there is a 15 almost a $1,500 gap in pricing and that is a considerable amount that's actually over 50% more I think it's like 66% more than what he is willing to pay and that's only one story I have story for lotuses I have stories for vintage collections I have story for every single type of collection you can imagine that he does buy so in my mind, you know, I'm, I'm getting these emails. So you gotta take it from my point of view. I am a competitor. I'm getting these emails and I'm looking at these emails. I'm looking at the offers he is giving to people. And he doesn't understand why people need money. For instance, for the sealed collection I purchased recently, the guy, he is a cool guy with his friends and his family. They're spending time and they're making films and they're doing, you know, a film studio. They're promoting it. He's got a dream. That money will go to paying his dream. You know, when people sell a collection and they're willing to sell it for peanuts because they trust you, and then you offer them a floppy taco, a buy list is good enough. I mean, you don't need the greed. You don't need to be that greedy to push someone in a corner and just pound them away with floppy tacos until eventually they sell it to you for 10%. Even the greatest low ballers in the history, when I think about low balling, there's one name in particular that comes to mind. It's Sasha T. Sasha T, for those in the sports card community, you guys know who he is. He is the ultimate low baller in that industry. I mean, and people make fun of him. It's so bad. He got he got decimated for lowballing so badly that he's no longer able to even show his face at conventions anymore. You know, he doesn't do the convention vlogs, which used to make him famous. Uh, he can't even go to these conventions anymore because, you know, people are not going to do, even his friends. I think the Tyler guy, he was like, man, I, if I can't sell it, you're, you're lowballing me. I know what you're going to do. You're going to lowball me. And then you're gonna take this card and you're gonna flip it for double and then take next table over. Because that's what he does time and time again. This is actually a very incredible skill. However, eventually people get tired. People don't want to sell you a card that's worth a thousand dollars for 200 and then you flip it for 2000 and you make a video about them. Right, that, that's not a great video if I'm the guy who sold it for 200 even if I get the Rudy Chan shout out. So my my beef is very, very simple. I mean, it's very flavorful, it's very simple. It's very, under, you have to, if I'm getting these emails all the effing time and I'm seeing like the lowballing is just on a level that that I have never heard of. And obviously we have Shasta T here to compare. You know, this guy's been essentially blacklisted from the, the sports car community, even by his own friends won't sell to him because he lowballs so hard. And you got another dude who's selling for, you know, who's proudly saying, hey, I will buy your light play Black Lotus for 45% heavy play, or sorry, light play 
45% whatever eBay complete is. Well, the eBay complete takes in account the condition of the card. So that doesn't make any sense. Why is he offering less of a percentage for light play, heavy play, modern play, mo moderate play for an eBay complete card as he would for a near mint or mint? I mean, is there really that much? And even then it's 60 to 65% publicly, privately, I've seen deals where, you know, it's, it's bad. Like if you really truly saw the emails I get and I have received, on what type of offers, right? I mean, it's great that I have a public thing that I can actually mention, which was the sealed collection. The guy, once you talk to him and you get to know him, he's a he's a good guy. You know, he's a hardworking guy. Him and his friends, they made a uh, studio together. They need the money. Fil filming is expensive. They want to buy a new camera. They have all. Once you talk to them. And you figure out, okay, this is why you would sell your magic clock. This is why you would sell your sealed collection for a five, six years. You've been just buying a box and putting them, you know, on a, a shelf. And now why would you sell that? Because it's something that you love. It's something we all love, you know, or what we're buying and it's something that you've done on a regular basis and you're selling it because you have a bigger dream. You have a bigger goal. You have a bigger thing that you want to get done. Rudy never even asked. It doesn't ask. And I think that's very, you know, I, I mean, it, it's one of these things where um, the more you get to know someone's rationale, why, you know, I, I'm always, the first thing I ask is why are you selling your collection? And sometimes when it doesn't make sense, I was like, oh, you probably should keep some of the cards that you really want. And there are every single, almost every single person who sells to me, they'll keep part of their collection. Cause I'll convince them, hey, like this is gonna be difficult to replace. You you probably better off keeping it if you can afford the money. So that's my, my my beef is he can pay more. He's wealthier than I am, he's wealthier than you are. He can't afford to pay more. He doesn't need to lowball to the point of you know being half of buy list, ten percent of buy list. It is not okay in my opinion to do that. I mean if if you wanna do that. If you wanna sell a collection to him, whatever your, and, and remember, these are high value collections. He doesn't even look at the low end. He, there are many collections he just passes on. I'm talking about the collections where somebody has dedicated a lot of time, dedicated a lot of money, and they're only moving from the collection because they need the money. They need the money. Do they need the money because they lost their job? Do they need the money to fund another project? I don't really, really know. He doesn't really know. I will find out and that will give more meaning when I buy the collection away because there are times that I give a higher premium because the story is kind of sad and it's like, wow, you really need the money probably more than I do. Now, nobody comes to you and sells their personal collection they've been collecting for sealed, unsealed, doesn't matter, for many years and does so because they have tons of money in a bank. Right? Oh, I'm just selling it because I'm wealthy and that's what wealthy people do, right? They're selling you that collection, a part of their kind of history of magic, um, if you will, because they need the money. And I, I fully recognize that. I mean, there's no, there's no, I, I read these emails. Rudy doesn't give a damn about these people, why these people are selling. He doesn't. It's a straight business transaction, right? Look, man, when I sold my collection, it was, I sold my collections a few times. Uh, most recently, GP, their first GP Houston, I sold my entire collection because I thought, oh, I'm about to see finally hit $100. This is never going to happen again. I thought it was going to drop again. Uh, you know, very silly, right? I sold to Strike Zone Online because there was a guy, his, I don't know if he's still there. His name was Chris. He wanted to know the story. He wanted to know. You know, we're magic players. It's more than a transaction. It's a history. It's a story. It's why we love playing the game, why we are now moving on from the game. That discussion, once I'm dealt, I mean, you can ask any of my sellers. We sit there and we talk, you know, oh, hey, you know, why are you selling? Or I'm selling to move. And it's a good relation. It's people continue to sell to me 
because it matters to me why they're selling. And that is my biggest gripe with, you know, people would love if Alpha Investments gave a damn about them, right? I mean, how excited, if, if people are getting excited talking to me, some much smaller, maybe 100 times smaller YouTuber, guess how excited it would be if Alpha Investment just reached out and said, hey, you know what? I'm wondering why you're selling a box of each set for the last five or six years. Oh, you know, I'm starting a studio. Oh, cool, cool. Let me give you a shout out. I mean, there's so much good that can come from these stories that it's just lost. Um, and as I get older, I realize that, yeah, it's the relationships you build with Magic the Gathering. It's the people that you talk to. It's a community. I have cards in my trade binder. I know exactly when I got them, how I got them, who I got them from. And the fact that I would never trade them because even though they're in the trade binder, they're just for show. They're artworks. You know, I had a, uh, a art artist or a card altarist. Uh, on my payroll and then suddenly, you know, she got married, she got kids, so she couldn't do the job. I really cherish those cards and we still talk. So I think when you make magic all about the money, the money, the money, and then you lowball people to the point that like, I mean, it's just pathetic. He can pay more. He is much wealthier than I am and he can pay more. Because the buy list, in my opinion, is already so. The reason I can match the buy list and even give it a premium, give you a tank of gas, give you whatever, right? Go out, pick any buy list. Because I am certain that company, as long as it's like a bigger company, right? That they've done their homework where their profit margins need to be. That's fine. To go at as low as alpha investment is going is just it's a bridge too far it's a bridge too far and honestly there's no need to do it people sell their collection to you they would love to talk to you they want to tell you why they're selling they want to tell you their attachment with magic they want to tell you all of this stuff instead you just give them floppy you just hit them with a floppy taco and move on right to hit more people Like people are not gonna say this to them. I mean, people don't say it to them because they don't. It's, it's very, very, you know, I'm very mean. I, you know, I'm a very, a certain type of person now. I'm very pessimistic on the, the future of humanity. If you watch my other channel, Gutter List, you know this. That I have very, very, you know, pessimistic views on how we're, how the economy, how we as a human kind is going. But I do think that you gotta talk, like if you're gonna buy a collection from someone, why are you buying the collection? Cool, are there any pieces you wanna keep that you know, that maybe they're not too valuable and that won't hurt you too much financially? Uh, I have bought collections from people who are were in very dire situations and collections that I normally wouldn't buy, standard and modern stuff. Hey, my rent is due. Okay, well, I mean, you gotta be more responsible over your money, but I'll bail you out this time around. It's, those are not the emails that I've seen the emails. I know what the response, I know what his, uh, his demeanor is. I've seen the emails from his, I mean, I've seen them. They've been screenshot to me. They're all get forwarded to me. And once you see so many of them and you see the offers he's making and you see like that he just doesn't give a damn about the person on the other side, you know, it, it, it is, simply put, he doesn't play Magic the Gathering. He didn't grow up with it like I did. We're, we're coming from to two totally different. He views it as a way for him to make money and get famous, right? I view it as a game I played since I was a kid since I was a little kid. I was actually talking to my best friend and probably my only friend in elementary, middle school and high school. We, you know, he's gonna look at his magic collection and see if there's anything he wants to sell me. Um, and now he's still, he's a high school teacher at the uh, high school that we used to go to. It's a way that I was able to make friends. It's a way that I was able to socialize. It was a way I was able to connect as a nerdy Asian kid in the 1990s, which was very difficult to do. Um, it was, 
So it, it reminds I me, mean, a lot of the beef reminds me of, you know, he only wants to make money. And there's no shame, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's, ain't, that's not the reason I'm still in magic. <laughs> Guys.